Welcome to Inspire Change, a new inspirational and motivational broadcast that strives to empower men in a positive way, designed to educate, empower, and inspire even the busiest individual on the go over that first cup of coffee. Please join me in welcoming Gunter Swoboda, international psychologist, author, speaker, and producer. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Inspired Change. So the last podcast was about turning points, and I shared my personal story where I see one of my major turning points in my life that led me from essentially going on surfing trips to becoming a practicing psychologist. And I left you with the uh, task to uh, explore in yourself, in your own journey, what those turning points in your life might have been. Um, so I want to carry on from there because, I, you know, I thought about it and part of this was about also storytelling. I was telling my story and as I keep bringing it up, you know, we all in our lives have a story or more than one story to tell that are not just meaningful to ourselves, but actually have meaning to others, whether they're, you know, a partner, our children, um, I'm forever really astonished when I work with teenagers how little a lot of the teenagers that I work with know about their family history and the, the stories within the family. I mean, it's even to the point sometimes where when I ask them about, so what does your dad do? They they actually can't answer me, uh, you, know, you know, sort of, oh, I think he does something in real estate or... You know, so they're very vague often about these things, and I think that's a shame on on a number of levels because our stories are about our existence, about our being, as much as it is about doing, and it helps, especially our kids, to get a sense of themselves within the world through, at times, their own eyes. And so, you know, one of the things that I want to do in this particular podcast is essentially to take it to another level. And the way that I want to do it is through Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey. Uh, as a writer of uh, nonfiction and fiction, uh, I'm very aware of structure in storytelling, okay? And... You know, I'm a, I'm a big subscriber to, you know, the, the three-act storytelling. Uh, the ancient Greeks used it, uh, and it's been a tradition about that. But overlaid in the three acts is what Joseph Campbell talks about as the monomyth and essentially the hero's journey and, and what that looks like. And, you know, anyone who's into watching movies and TV programs will probably be aware that most of the films have a particular structure and pace to them, both for the story arc, but also for the character arc. Now, this is not just fiction. This is also something that I want to challenge you to see whether you can relate this to your own life, to your life story. Um, A lot of you are probably interested in things like biographies and autobiographies. And, you know, this is where we go to where reading is a fundamental aspect in human existence. And unfortunately, too many people that I see, especially teenagers, is they don't read the way that we used to. Uh, I got my first library card when I, when I was about seven, and, and I, I was just an avid reader. You couldn't get me out of the library with a stack of books fast enough so I could get home and, you know, settle down in my chair in my room and open the book, you know, with this sense of anticipation and excitement about what is going to be revealed to me in this story along the way. Now, you know, occasionally I'd be tempted to go to the last chapter and see what the outcome is, but I very quickly learnt that that spoils it. You know, if you're going to really get into the story, just take it one step at a time. Okay, so let me 
come back to essentially this issue about turning points, okay? And so a good metaphor in this is that, you know, it's that last page of a chapter where we're about to turn it and we're about to enter a new chapter in the story. So turning points, and in my experience working with people, is most of us have some intuition or some sense that we're about to face a turning point. Now, sometimes that turning point is, in fact, you know, a crisis and potentially painful, either physically or emotionally or socially or professionally. Um, so, you know, there's a question of what do I do with that? Now, a lot of us, particularly us as men, where we're trained often to and socialised to ignore uh, our intuition, our sense of things, um, we put it aside, we brush it. So, you know, again, I'm often surprised by a lot of the guys that I work with who have run headlong into what I see as, you know, a serious turning point in their life and they just miss the lead up to it completely. And so they get caught off guard. And one of the consequences of that is that they enter the space between this chapter and the next chapter, which is an ending and a beginning, and there is a space between with a sense of feeling lost, confused, a sense of trepidation. Uh, sometimes it's fear. Sometimes it's anxiety about you know catastrophizing. Oh, what's about to come next? And in some instances, as I said, in our lives, when we're facing with you know stressful, traumatic, or painful experiences, you know we sort of got to brace ourselves in some way for that, right? So. What is it I'm, that I'm ultimately doing in that space between the last page of that chapter and the beginning of the next chapter? And this is where I think that we need to reflect on our character. Are we subdued by fear and anxiety? Or do we have the skills and resources to rally and you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. It's a wonderful title to a book that was released, I think, in the 80s. And I can't remember the author now. But it was all about managing anxiety and, and to some degree, fear. So some people at that point also then become defensive. I don't want to change. I, I know, you know, I just want things to be the same. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, we don't necessarily know whether that's true or not. Is that actual or is that part of the story that I'm telling myself in order to feel better without necessarily doing a reality check on it? So, again, my challenge always to you as my listeners, and I really do appreciate you guys tuning in and and, and paying attention. And at some point, I'd love to get some feedback from everybody out there about what it is that you've been able to take out of my podcast. But this is where I go, it is time to raise your awareness through reflection, not being reactive, but, you know, focusing on being responsive to what the universe is putting in front of you. And some of it is obscure and some of it is as blatant as a smack in the head. Now, unfortunately, sometimes we need that smack in the head in order to wake up. It's a shame, but I've had experiences where, you know, I've literally sort of copped one to the chin and gone, okay, get back up, dust yourself off and and learn from this. You know, don't fight it. Um, you know, they, as I've said in other podcasts, one of the sort of things that I struggled with was that meme about, you know, what doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. But it's true. It's, you know, one of the aspects to being resilient. So, in a quick summary, the turning point, we anticipate, we usually have a sense of something about to arise, it comes up, there's a space in between, and the next step in our lives unfolds. Now, how that unfolds ultimately is also dependent on what is what is it that I can do with it? So let me come back to the hero's journey and this um, 
idea that Joseph Campbell put forward. And in many respects, uh, in, in the short version is that Campbell talks about three basic stages in the hero's journey. Um, but he then expands it to 17 steps of the monomyth that are grouped into these uh, three main categories. So the first step is the departure. In other words, <clears throat> this is where our hero, i.e. I, am living in my so-called ordinary world. And suddenly I get this call to adventure. Now, usually in most stories, the hero is really ambivalent about following that particular call to adventure. And in storytelling and in the, in the model of uh, the hero's journey, that's called the refusal of the call. But then out of the blue sometimes, uh, sometimes not so much out of the blue, the hero is helped by a mentor who counsels him and convinces him to follow the call. Okay, so I want you to think about that. So two levels of thinking and reflecting about that is one, <clears throat> grab your favourite movie, okay? Watch it and think about in the first act where this is going on. What's going on there? Who's who and what, what are they up to? What's the theme here? Now, the second part of the um, hero's journey, the second category is the initiation, and this is where the hero enters the special world, where he begins to face a series of tasks until he re reaches the climax of the story, the, 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 the pinnacle in the story arc. Uh, it could be an obstacle or it could be an enemy. Okay, And in this context, the hero's got to put into practice everything he's learned. Because he's got to overcome that obstacle or that foe. Now, Campbell also at that point talks about the hero getting a prize out of that. You know, some physical token or something that resembles good old-fashioned values. Or sometimes both. Okay, again, reflect on this. This is often in Act 2. Now... The next category is the return, where I, as the hero, am ready to come back into my world and I've got to leave the special world. Now, once back in the ordinary world, world uh, there's an, a personal change, a metamorphosis um, into understanding how my adventure has changed me. What is it that has woken me up? So in order to help this along a little bit um, and get you to really reflect both on yourself but also when you're watching and immersing yourself in stories, and I want to encourage you to do this because it also helps, if you're a parent, make up stories to tell your children, whether they're three years old or seven or sometimes 13. You know, we often disengage from teenagers because we get the sense they don't really want to know us. Well, that's not entirely true. A lot of them are craving to get to know us as their parent better. But we generally focus only on getting them to do the right things. Have you done your homework? Have you cleaned your room? You know, you're not doing drugs, are you? Or, you, you know, <clears throat> have you raided the liquor cabinet? We become this sort of overlord. And, you know, any self-respecting teenager is going to go, I don't want to put up with this. I don't want to experience that. Um, so they try to keep out their distance from us. And it's a very sad aspect of what I see often in, in amongst teenagers. Not all, but some, certainly. So <clears throat> one of the films that had a massive impact on me was Star Wars. I remember sitting in the theatre and watching this thing and just being totally blown out by the visual effects and the storyline and the setting. So if I walk through the hero's journey in Star Wars, is let's start with Luke's ordinary world. 
So here he is. He's living on.